I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your cattle market summary for the week ending March the 13th where the improved weather just across the country uh, brought better moods and, uh, and just an energy into the cattle market this week. Feeder and stocker cattle both sold three to seven dollars higher. You had your, your old crop calves, uh, those calf weight yearlings and your peewee lightweight calves selling up to fifteen dollars higher as uh, you guys that are looking to buy some grass cattle really came into the market. Uh, your receipts were a lot higher in auctions all across the country. Uh, we've had those weather delays and icy roads and bad conditions, especially in the southeast and in the southern plains, and those were pretty much all gone this week. And receipts were a lot heavier than they've been in recent weeks. A lot of your southern plains sales moving up into the Midwest had some of their biggest runs that they see all year long. Uh, several big high volume sale barns there had over 10,000 head this week, including Oak City, El Reno, Joplin, all through there. Uh, a lot of wheat cattle coming off this week. Uh, your wheat yearlings, green yearlings in high demand there. And uh, those cattle need to come off before March the 15th in order to uh, go ahead and make a crop if those farmers want to on those wheat pastures. And so they finally got an opportunity to move those cattle. But still, even though we had uh, heavy receipts this week, they were no heavier than the same week a year ago and pretty much normal for this time of week. So we still got a lot of cattle to move, especially in the, in the parts of the southeast that had the worst weather there in Kentucky and Tennessee. And this week it was just so muddy in those areas that their receipts were still down a little bit. And, and they got quite a few cattle in that area. And so there's still a lot of cattle to sell right in there. Uh, the attendance was really good, had full seats in a lot of your sale barns, a lot of active bidding noted on all classes of cattle, both in the seats and over the internet, which most sale barns have some type of internet bidding capability now, and, and just a lot of buyers for all classes of cattle. Most of your calves now uh, really jumping back up there, not, not up to the record levels that we saw but pretty much have regained all the loss that we've seen so far this calendar year. And uh, your calves, steer calves weighing under 550 are all now up there right around $3 or, or over. So we've gotten back up to that benchmark on your lightweight steer calves. Problem on these lightweight cattle and, and bigger cattle too is that your heifer discount is just so large and most all your calf heifers are at least $30 back and a lot of them are 40 or $50 back on similar weights and just heifer mates off those steers. And it might be an opportunity for some of these guys that are wanting to buy, you know, some stock of cattle, but don't have uh, enough money to really stock their pastures or, or they're really uh, price conscious of that to go ahead and go into the heifer. Sure, everybody always wants steers. It's a little better. Uh, to estimate what they're going to bring when you get ready to sell them. They're a little easier to sell, but uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with heifers. Uh, you're not going to have as dramatic a weight gain naturally because they're, they're heifers. But uh, one thing people forget about heifers is the closer they get to the knife, the heavier they get, uh, the, the more narrow that that uh, discount is until you finally get up until those those things are, are market ready and ready for slaughter and they bring exactly the same price so it doesn't make a lot of difference to have such a huge discount on your heifers off of those steers and and really uh, there's an opportunity there to 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 buy into that heifer market because it's just so much cheaper than what the steers are right now but on your Big feeder cattle, uh, they did get some support from the CME board this week and and we saw the same increase on your big heavy feeders coming in. And a lot of these uh, feedlots and, and farmer feeders, they're wanting to go ahead and get these cattle bought up uh, and get their pens full before we get into planting season and all the changes that that could bring. And also uh, your big feedlots, especially in the southern plains, they're pushing on these green yearlings coming off wheat. and. Uh, they want to get those cattle bought because once we get through these wheat cattle, there's just not going to be a whole lot of big feeders to buy other than what come out of a growing yard. And those are just less desirable because they've already been on a full ration. They're pretty fleshy and they're not, not going to take to that feed uh, going into the feedlot like, the, like some green cattle would. But uh, the next big push after we get through with these 
Uh, we will have a few grazed out cattle coming here in a couple months, you know, and they'll go ahead and, and graze that wheat all the way out till it gets too tough to graze. It starts bearding out and then those cattle can have trouble eating it and get lump jaws and what have you and things like that. But uh, the next big push after we get through what green uh, wheat cattle we have left is going to be your contracting of your summer yearlings coming off grass and especially those double stock pastures and the Osage and the Flint Hills that your feedlots are really wanting to go to. Now contracting those cattle could be a little more difficult this year than it is a lot of years really because uh, what these guys are going to be wanting for those cattle coming off grass is going to be a lot more than what your summer contracts are on your on your CME feeder cattle futures. So they want to go ahead and, and try to get those cattle, but it's going to be hard to come to a price on those cattle. Already this spring, we're seeing cattle come to the sale barn that normally sell in the country. And it's just the last several rounds, those guys that sold early, especially in the summertime, they left a lot of money on the table. If you sold uh, summer yearlings this time last year, for, for July, August, or even September, October delivery, you left a ton of money on the table and felt like a goat when you went to deliver those cattle because they were worth so much more than what you were getting paid on. And, and guys are gonna remember that and it's just gonna be hard to get those cattle secured. And right now we're just not sure whether we're in a bullish market or whether we're in a bearish market. Sure, the last couple of weeks we've had some pretty good support from the board Nobody really thinks we can depend on that. And by and large, your, your buyers, guys that are trying to buy cattle, especially growing type cattle, either, either stock or cattle to turn out, uh, or, even, or even some lighter cattle to put in the feed yard, uh, the buyers are think we're in a bullish market. They're wanting to get those cattle bought up before it could go any higher. But your sellers are kind of in a bearish mode uh, they're hoping to market holes until they get their cattle sold and, and or they're wanting to hurry up and get that price, get everything they can squeeze out of them because they were so sick right after the first of the year when that thing took a dive. So we just aren't sure whether the bulls or the bears are in control. There's very little confidence in your CME cattle futures right now. It's just, uh, it, it, you just don't know what it's going to do. It's just up one day, down the next. Uh, it's gotten so volatile with these expanded daily limit moves now that we, we don't know what to do with it. Uh, we see people looking at the board now, and if it's less than $1.50 move one way or the other, which used to be our limit, then they think it's pretty much steady. But uh, we're not sure if this thing's going to follow sound fundamental rules. And we're not even sure if it's going to meet up when we get to a maturity of the contract, meet up with cash or not. And the way this thing can jostle so quick, it can be a long ways from meeting up and then just snap right back an adjustment there in the last day or two, which doesn't allow for a real good benchmark to contract off of. Your fat cattle this week were kind of unevenly steady. Uh, had a few sales here and a few sales there, but not a lot of sales of anything. Range from 158 to 162 and a half live. Your late sales in the Southern Plains there in Kansas were mostly 161, which was pretty much steady, so didn't gain any more there. Uh, cows and bulls this week pretty much leveled out because we did see bigger runs in the sale barns where they get most of them, and they were able to get a few more bought up, and we'd seen a big run up the last two or three weeks on these cows and bulls. But that uh, pretty much wraps up your uh, cattle market summary for this week. Go to DV auction. We're still in the middle of uh, bull season right now. Just this weekend, right now, we're going to have uh, bull sales from 17 different states broadcasted over DV auction. So get on there and, and get your bull needs filled right there. But check out DV auction for more information or go to the stockexchangenews.com for this report and other information. And from a DV Auction home office here in Maysville, Missouri, we'll talk to you next week.